The Vajo Aero is an expensive piece of kit. It's a prosumer VR headset with the price tag to match. It boosts Steam VR tracking, dual mini LED screens with a whopping resolution of 2880 by 2720, eye tracking which supports foveated rendering and we'll talk more about that later on in the video. It's got automatic IPD adjustment, it's also able to adjust the pixel density depending on whether you want to balance off performance or image quality, but it can also vary that pixel density across the screen. So it mimics your actual eyes in terms of the center of the screen is the sharpest and it gets slightly less sharp as you move further out to the edges of the screen but at an eye-watering 2,000 euros, and that's before you've got controllers and base stations, and it excludes tax. Is this headset really worth the cash? So let's start with what's really good about this headset. The IPD adjustment is excellent. It's completely automatic. There's little motors that move the lenses backwards and forwards. You pop the VR headset on, and it does all of that work for you so it really is very simple and straightforward and that ease of setup is equally true with the Vajo uh, base software which i have to say is very stable in comparison to the likes of steam vr and oculus and it's also got excellent excellent comfort it's got a halo band uh, style strap on it but it doesn't put excessive uh, pressure on my forehead as I found with the uh, with the Cosmos very comfortable it's got lots of adjustment including being able to move the headband up and down which makes getting the headset on and off much easier to do it's got really nice soft padding on it the facial interface material is very pleasant I didn't, didn't feel at all the need to get any kind of replacement um, foam material for this headset now, there's a very good chance if you're looking at this headset, you've got a pretty beastly PC to go with it, but you might be concerned given how high the resolution is. You might be worried about what sort of performance you're gonna get out of it. And this is the beautiful irony of this headset. In Microsoft Flight Simulator and DCS, I'm actually getting better performance on this headset than I'm getting with my Reverb G2. Now. It's got a much lower resolution, the Reverb G2, at 2160 by 2160 per eye. And surely, I'm, you must be thinking, that doesn't make any sense at all. But let me explain. The Vajo Aero makes use of eye tracking, and it combines this with what is called eye-tracked foveated rendering. So wherever you are looking on the screen, it's nice and sharp. The image elsewhere, it lowers the resolution down in order to be able to boost up the frames. So despite having an overall larger resolution for each eye, it's actually demanding less work from your PC because it's lowering the resolution where you're, where you're not looking. And the image quality on this headset is absolutely sensational. It is without a doubt the best quality display I have seen in a VR headset. It's like I'm looking at a monitor and it feels like a 4K monitor that I'm looking at. This headset has a spheric lenses. Unlike Fresnel lenses, there are no ridges. So God rays are completely eliminated. It does, however, result in some slight distortion at the very edge of the image. It's noticeable when you first put the headset on, but within 10 minutes of play, I had forgotten about it and was just completely besotted by the beautiful image. Tracking is excellent, of course, because it makes use of the Steam VR Lighthouse tracking system. So you've got sub millimeter tracking. There's no headset drift like I get in the Reverb G2 on occasion that makes use of inside out tracking. The Vajo software is excellent and there's no need to use Steam VR with any of the sims that I fly. So Microsoft Flight Simulator, DCS and Elite Dangerous all work natively with the Vajo software. A little bit of tweaking required uh, with Elite Dangerous, but they make use of something called the OpenXR 
uh, render API. This is a slightly different way of rendering scenes than say Oculus or Steam VR use. It's actually a much more efficient way of rendering those VR scenes. So you do get a nice little uh, performance bump and you don't get the sort of degraded performance that when you're using um, you know, Windows Mixed Reality and Steam VR at the same time where those two things are talking to each other. So uh, make use of the OpenXR uh, render pipeline and do that natively within the, uh, within the Varjo base software. I'm able to run and maintain a DCS and Elite Dangerous both at a very steady 90 frames per second. Microsoft Flight Simulators typically in the high 70s, uh, low 80s depending on my settings and the place of the world in which I'm flying. So this headset is visually beautiful, it's comfortable, it's feature rich and the eye tracking really does help it deliver really, really blistering performance. So what don't I like about it? And my single biggest gripe with this headset is it has a dreadful, almost non-existent audio solution. It has no speakers uh, at all. It does have a three and a half mil jack that you can attach um, some like dangly headphones to if you want. Um, I've chosen just to use my Corsair, uh, my Corsair headset. Um, that works perfectly well. And I am, in all fairness, able to get headphones over the VR headset pretty comfortably, but the complete absence of a mic on this headset is, for me as a content creator, a little bit of a deal breaker, particularly when I'm streaming. Trying to make use of a different mic solution, being able to capture that in the sim and on my recording, it just adds a load of complexity into my workflow, and Windows is not very good at mirroring Audio, Windows Mixed Reality and Steam VR do a pretty good job of that. Windows doesn't do such a great job on its own and the Vajo software doesn't really help with this either. So um, when I'm streaming, I do find myself reaching for uh, the Reverb G2, but I will be honest with you folks, if I'm just flying for fun, if I'm just doing DCS online with my mates, the Vajo Aero is my go-to headset without a moment's hesitation. It is leaps and bounds above even the Reverb G2, which is no slouch when it comes to visual performance. And I do accept that the streaming content creation is a bit of a niche thing that is you know, specific to a minority of people. So if you're looking at this headset, you're not gonna make content, um, not a deal breaker, but I would think carefully if you, if you are making content uh, of some description. It's also worth noting that in order to get the eye tracking working in Microsoft Flight Simulator and DCS, there is a bit of tinkering that you need to do uh, beneath the surface. There's some MSI files that you need to swap out. You do need to make use of something called uh, the OpenXR Toolkit, which is available freely. It's a very well-documented product. So as long as you've got the patience to sit and read the documentation and get uh, familiar with what that's doing to your headset and candidly folks it's not worth using this in Microsoft Flight Simulator and DCS if you're not going to make use of that eye tracked foveated uh, rendering you're going to lose out on performance and you're not going to get um, as crispy clear uh, visuals and frankly you're just you're just wasting money because the headset's capable of doing it the downside is that Microsoft Flight Simulator and DCS don't do it natively there is third party tools that you need to use in order uh, to be able to get this uh, to work. That's also true for Elite Dangerous to get the uh, the Open XR render pipeline uh, working, but it is it is worth making that effort. So who is this headset for? Well, it's definitely not a starter headset. This is for people who've owned previous headsets, something in Steam, VR, or maybe an Oculus headset, and they're looking really to up their game. They're looking for the absolute best visual quality that they can get. Uh, they're looking for the bells and whistles with foveated uh, eye tracked rendering, etc. Um, and it's certainly for people who've got a little bit of experience in using VR. And, are prepared to spend the time uh, getting an understanding of what things like OpenXR and the OpenXR uh, toolkit are. This headset, without a doubt, is exceptional in simulators. 
It's very good in standard VR games, so if you want to play Half-Life Alex and you want the absolute best visual quality, it absolutely will do that. It will pair with any controllers that work in the Steam uh, VR ecosystem. So for me, I use my Valve Index uh, controllers with it and they pair really, really well, really seamlessly, no problems at all. But I really do feel like at the heart and soul of this headset, it really was intended uh, for simmers because that's where it really, really shines. Now, if you're looking for something that's really simple and easy to get set up, you just want to wade into games and you want access to a good marketplace where you can buy games, this, this might not be the headset for you. You can, of course, use it with Steam VR and it integrates uh, fairly well, but you're not going to have quite a slick an experience uh, as you would say with the Oculus Store. Now, that said, the Vajo Base software is easily the most stable, the most consistent from a performance perspective that I've used. And even new VR headsets, such as the Pimax uh, Crystal uh, headset that was recently released, if you look at the resolution, it's broadly on par uh, with the Vajo Aero. Um, and the Aero is a little bit more established. It's been out for a good few years now. All those teething problems have been ironed out and you've got a stable ecosystem. And you know, the Pimax has not, not even really got its eye tracking uh, working yet. Now it, it is expensive. It's 2000 euros there or thereabouts. That's excluding tax. That's excluding base stations. That's excluding controllers. You don't need the controllers, by the way, if you're just using it for Sims. Um, so this is this is not an inexpensive uh, purchase without a doubt, but it does frankly give you the absolute pinnacle of consumer-based uh, VR. And if you're trying to supplement real-world flying, trying to do something a little bit more professional, or frankly you've just got deep pockets and you want the best that money can buy, um, even in 2023. This is a headset that is worth the investment if you can afford it and you've got a PC with the uh, with the horsepower uh, to drive it. I run mine with a 4090 RTX 4090 and a, a 7950X 3D. And as I say, I get consistent 90 frames per second in DCS, even on the carrier, on the super carrier, which is absolutely crazy bonkers. I get the same in Elite Dangerous and 70 to 80 frames per second in Microsoft Flight Simulator. That is not uh, to be sniffed at. So um, yeah, it, it's, it's prosumer grade and it's the best. If you're interested in flight sim peripherals, check out this playlist. There's a smorgasbord of things to look at in there. Uh, as always, I hope you're very well wherever in the world you are. Stay safe in the skies and I'll see you in my next one.